Today I'm processing how to do the workshop method in online instruction. What's up guys, welcome back to The Teacher's Brew. This is my daily vlog reflection vlog so that I can uh, improve my practice and force myself every single day to stop and think back to how the previous day went, how I can improve uh, as this day goes on. Uh, full disclosure, I do all of this before my actual contract hours start so that it, we're above board. Uh, I'm not sure that you really care about that, but uh, I just wanted to update you on something as well. Yesterday I said I was gonna do a lap uh, three times a day. I ended up doing more than that. I think I did four times. I went out for a lap just to kind of get the blood flowing and uh, get some oxygen to my brain. Um, <clears throat> we know that when the walking mind is a more, um, it's a sticky mind. You can remember things better. It's just a sharper mind. So um, my adjustment to that today is I think I'll do when I go out for those three times a day, I'll actually do two laps because I did one lap around the school and that was helpful, but I think two laps would be enough to really get the blood flowing a bit. Uh, I don't think one lap was quite enough. Um, we have a decent sized school, but I just don't think one lap was enough. So I think I'll be doing two laps. Uh, but today I'm really learning about workshop method integration to online learning. Now, if you're not familiar with the workshop method, I'll give you a, a quick little synopsis of what it is. Essentially, the workshop method is uh, a, a short core instruction and a lot of work time. So it's learning through doing, giving students the chance to learn through doing. And uh, you can do this with any subject area. I did a class on this a couple years back and uh, professional development. And I remember there being uh, language arts teachers, math teachers, there was a bunch of different types of teachers in the room. Uh, it just so happens that for my content areas, it might even be more natural uh, and, and lend itself, especially like robotics. Um, it's just more natural to do a workshop method type class. So, but I've been thinking about how do you do the workshop method uh, at home? Because there's a lot of learning through doing and so how do you build your structures and prepare students to do all of the learning on their own from home. Well, on their own is a strong is a strong phrase. And, and then um, how are we utilizing the core instruction? One of my biggest uh, reflections so far of online learning has been that it's forced me to do better and more detailed core instruction because I can't just give kids materials and say, now go try it out and let's see what happens. Um, that's a really fun way to teach and, and it, typically brings a lot of troubleshooting to the forefront, which is great. And there are some ISTE standards uh, that are that are on, that talk even just about um, learning and troubleshooting technologies. That's important as well for students to learn. But I, I digress. The workshop method, typically how it works for my classes is the beginning of the week, I start off with more of like a 10 to 15 minute core instruction and then some work time. And then throughout the week, it gets less and less and less to like five minutes of core instruction and then the rest of class, like 40 minutes of work time. Some of my classes, uh, the learning through doing is becoming apparently necessary. For example, my computer science class, uh, some of the coding programs that we use, the kids are going to have to just start getting hands on and doing it. And uh, I can't do core instruction for 45 minutes forever. Eventually, I need students to start doing the learning. And uh, I'd really like to be more workshop style and have longer periods of time of learning. But how do we do that from an online learning environment? This is something that I've been thinking about and processing. And so as a verbal processor, this is my way talking to this camera here is my way of doing this. Uh, thinking specifically about two of my classes for today, my computer science class, uh, they are kind of moving into actual coding and we have a program set up and everything ready to go. Uh, and so now it's kind of that time where, what does that work time look like? How are they integrated online while doing their work time? Are they completely on their own? And we'd call that asynchronous, right? Uh, maybe I prepare a video or something for them as a guide, or is it completely together, completely synchronous? We're working together as we go. That's the question. Uh, and then the 3D design class that I'm teaching right now, uh, the students are ready to start actually designing something. They're trying to solve a problem, uh, a real life problem, and 
uh, through 3D printing, and so they're designing for it right now. And now it's kind of time for them to just go for it and give it a try and, and learn the tools of the program. And we've talked about the tools, but until you start using them and, and are actually stretching objects, it's just really hard to use the program well. So for those two classes specifically, my plan is this. I'm gonna start off with a short core instruction like I would if they were in person. Uh, short core instruction is my way of keeping everybody connected. That way we never get to the point where kids walk in and they have no structure, right? So keeping that structure going by having them log in and do all the same morning routines that they would do any other day. Um, secondly, then uh, I'm gonna have them do some goal setting. This is really important for me and important, I think, in the workshop method. You can, you can totally do the workshop method without goal setting, but I'm a huge goal setting fan. I believe in goal setting and I believe it's a good practice for life, that we are always seeking to achieve more and get better and better ourselves and better our family standing, all that good stuff. So I'm going to bring goal setting back into it. I haven't been doing a ton of goal setting just yet, but now I will uh, with, with this new method coming back into play. So uh, goal setting will be a huge part. They'll set a goal. They'll do some goal setting. We'll have a journal set up, uh, all that good stuff. And then um, they're going to do a live chat. Uh, and the live chat will be essentially while we keep the, we're going to keep my audio and our chat bar open. We use the program WebEx. They're going to keep it open in the background on their iPads and they're going to go to work, but then I'm going to be there. They can bounce back onto WebEx at any point in time, kind of like an office hour setup where students can come back at any point in time during that 45 minute block and get help. Uh, primarily, I'm, I'm assuming that today will probably be more troubleshooting help, that students will be struggling to do certain things, like how do I download this program, how do I get on there, um, and how does the program work? And then hopefully uh, we'll get past that and get into real content learning, where students are asking specific questions about how to do things, which is really where the learning gets good. When students are doing 3D design and they're asking me questions about how to create a hole or how to measure something, um, that's where the learning gets real because they're making the connection between, I know you told me I'm gonna have to do this, but now I see why or how it has to be done in order to actually accomplish the task that I'm trying to accomplish. So, we'll see how it goes. I'll reflect on that next time. And for today, uh, my encouragement for myself that I'm telling myself I need to be doing is I need to be flexible and make sure that I'm being as available for students as possible as we make this shift into some more workshop style learning. And my encouragement to you is to look into the workshop method. It's a fantastic way of teaching. It's a ton of fun uh, and it is kind of more project based and I love project based learning.